Yo, what's up, guys? I hope everyone is okay watching this video. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. I apologize for not uploading. Um, yeah, I want to get straight into it, into this video. I'm actually very happy making this video because um, I had a huge argument with my mom again. You know, great way to start the new year, right? 2024. But it honestly ended up kind of nice because I don't want to make it weird, but I, I, I was in a moment of despair, of depression, of... You know, looking at no way out other than offing myself, or other than destroying my life in real time. Literally. Obliterating myself from the universe. Literally. And it sounds kind of cringe when I say that, but it's it's the genuine feeling that I have, and I can't really help help it. It's my natural tendency. I'm probably mentally fucking ill. But in in that moment of, of doubt, all of that depression, all that darkness, I just thought to myself, no. And I cried, and I, and I prayed to God. Um, I pray to Allah. So, yeah, that's a whole different separate topic. I might be in another video. Maybe in a video in the future. Um, me detailing my journey towards Islam, maybe, hmm, maybe based Muslim. I don't know, maybe. But I, just, I just out of my own own accord, out of my own desire, I just professed my my fear and love and my and my forgiveness for this, this all powerful deity and bring comfort to my heart and. All my life so far, I've just been told, yeah, you can't fail. You, you can't fail. You can never fail. And I made like a minor mistake and my mom just like ripped into me. And she was having a bad day of her own. She just woke up to something fucking crazy, of course. And I, I, I apologize. I apologize to her and I manned up and I, and, and I took the blame. I took the fall and I'm solving the problem and issue as we speak. But motherfucker, it's hard. It's very hard on me. And the realization I've come to from this difficulty is that, yeah, you got to do what's right. Always. What you think is right. No, you got to do what you think is right. Okay, guys? You take advice from other people. You're not living your own life. You have to do what you think is right. That's like my most genuine advice from the bottom of my heart. You must do what you think is right. Period. No other way to describe it. You can doubt yourself, sure. You can, you can, you can make the wrong decision. You can fail, okay, guys. You can fail. You can fuck up. You can lose thousands of pounds, maybe. That'd be that's a pretty big fuck up, I have to admit. You can lose everything, but you have to approach life with, hey, yeah, I, I will fail. When do I fail? That's what the fucking question is. I'm doing what I think is right. Okay, I've done everything I think is right so far. All 100 of my decisions, my past 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 decisions have been what I thought genuinely was the correct way of going things. Through things. I genuinely thought that. And I failed. And it's my fault. And living life this way is so beautiful because when you live life just doing what you're thinking is right, you get to like live life free. You know, under the confines of individuals around you, your mother, your father, your sister, your older brother, anyone telling you what to do. You're not a, like a monotonous robot anymore. You're doing what you think genuinely from the bottom of your heart is right. That's what matters more. That's what that's what's worth to me a hundred million pounds. You know, I just recently just factory reset my, my PS4. I'm about to take a picture of it right now and put it on fucking Facebook Marketplace, eBay and all those other respective platforms in order to get rid of it. I would have gone, you know, in the moment, I thought it was right, right now I'm kind of regretting it a bit, but by tomorrow, when I'm working, I'll probably think it's right again, because I'm not wasting my fucking time with bullshit anymore, playing video games, that, which I don't want to play anyway, that I hate, that I'm bad at, it will pay dividends, and I stand by this, this decision. Doing what you think is right yields the highest ROI. Because there's, on, there's only one person to blame. That's you. It's you at the end of the day. There's no one else. There's no proprietary person you can say, hey, yeah, you fucked up. It's all your fault. This, there's no such thing. Because there's only you at the end of the day. And that is worth a million fucking dollars. And people might call me fucking crazy, but I think from the bottom of my heart, that is worth a million dollars. Doing what you think is right. Because at the end of the day, what do you have? If not your thoughts, if not your decisions, if not your body. 
your body could have a problem and a thyroid issue is very rare but it's possible it's, it's it's improbable but it's definitely possible you could have a thyroid issue you can become obese you know you could you could try to eat a lot of food and can never gain weight some shit like that your thoughts are one of the only things you truly own and doing the things that you you think doing the things that you you own in your mind is perhaps one of the most greatest things you can do straight up that's my best possible advice from the bottom of my heart i can give you do what you think is right and maybe it's to take that risk maybe it's to take that leap of faith maybe it's to push and go on a, on a road obviously with calculated risk with backup plan perhaps don't focus too much on backup plan because then it becomes plan A obviously but doing what you think is right it's just it's so liberating like what, what, what else is there to do guys in this life and my mom was telling me do this do this do this and I told myself, these, these things will yield me the, the most negative ROI. I will get fucked up if I do these things. No offense, mom. Probably not watching my video anyway. I don't give a fuck. Like, my mom was giving me the worst advice, like, you know, you know, get a, get, get a nice touch. She's just telling me what, like, she's, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but a woman think emotionally. The entire argument we had, she had like a problem, like, government on her ass. She doesn't know how to read the fucking text. I'm reading it, I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, I can, I can try to fix this. Uh, I, I, I'm not even trying to fix it. I said, uh, okay, so how are we going to fix this? And she said, no, you're going to fix it because it's, it's your fault. As, and then I said, in the, in the argument that we had, this is supposed to be a team effort. She was like, I've been doing this for like four years. Be useful in your once in your fucking life. I was like, god damn. That's a lot to say. And I got so angry to the point where I got calm. I got so angry to the point where I felt numb. I got so angry to the point where... I could not look anywhere else apart from in the mirror at myself and look at how such a big fuck up I am and cry and beg and weep to God for a way out and I guess this video is a form of therapy because I, I, I really don't know where else to go other than doing what I think is right and it turns out I did what I thought was right and it was right wow brilliant gosh darn it I want to sell my PS4. I want to move on. I would like to move on. That's what I like to do. I don't want to. I don't want to live this mediocre life anymore. That's what I think is right. What I think is right is become rich, become successful, get in the best possible shape, achieve all my goals, be that world champion boxer. If I can't make it, if I, I, I know if I have a few fights, amateur fights, maybe a few pro fights, if I'm good enough. If I'm not good enough, then fair enough, I'll probably hang up the gloves. Dead honest. If YouTube, I'm not good enough, then I'll hang up, and then I'll... Uh, I'm, I mean, YouTube just keep creating content consistently, there is no, there's no real way to fail, per se. In my genuine opinion, but you know, I kind of am losing something. I'm kind of am failing in real time right now. So, come on, guys, please, please subscribe. <laughs> Give me a moment. Anyways, let me try to. I wrote a bit of things I wanted to talk about, and yeah, I think I'm. I, I've kind of like skimmed past them, but I haven't talked about it in detail yet. And I wanted to talk about my mum's argument with me. So basically my mum had like a huge mess up with the government and they, she needs to pay extra money to the government. And it's kind of tough. It's really tough for me. And her, her bank account is, you know, not looking good. And my bank account is not looking good. And I'm, I'm broken. She's broken. You know, everyone's poor. And it's not looking good at all. Okay. And then she just blamed me for everything. You have to fix it now because it's your problem. Because you turn 18 and then this happened and this happened and you have to do it. And I felt bullied, I felt ostracized, and I was, I was all bullied, I was ostracized, and, and I just thought to myself, for, for just a split second again, like, bro, these issues won't, won't fix themselves 
by themselves. Like, Jimmy, man the fuck up. You're, you're gonna have to make your own decisions. You're gonna do what you think is right. He's like, do this, 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 do this. And like, I'm just thinking about all these options on my on my table. Like, yeah, these options aren't fucking helping, mum. Like, you're kind of you're kind of messing me up here. Like, this is not going good. Like, you aren't putting me in a good position. I am going to get messed up. What is going on here? And she doesn't understand this. She doesn't even understand the paperwork she's thing reading. And I just thought to myself, like, this individual is like, honestly, it's very dark, depressing thoughts. The most dark thoughts, like. I told my own mum, like, bro, you need, you should just go on abortion because I'm a failure. I'm a failure. And she told me, yeah, I know you're a failure. And I've already accepted that no one is going to come to save me. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on now. And I, like, that broke me. That really did break me. That's the abusive household I live in. Let's fucking go. W in chat. W chat abusive household. Fuck is that duck outside my house? I told myself at the moment, this is the hand I'm dealt. And I can do what I can do to mitigate it. I'll do what I think is right. And let's see if that works. And it did work. Thank God. God did. But um, we don't know how long that is going to go. Of course I'm going to fail somewhere down the line. Of course there'll be no one else believing me. But no doubt in my heart. <sighs> could have been better. It could have been a lot, a lot better. Anyways, next topic I want to talk about. The advice of others is not always applicable. My mom told me things like, Oh, so you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that. Get another this, get another that. I'm like, this is not going to help. And I want you to sit down and just think to yourself, genuinely, is the advice of other people, like, that's is the advice that's coming from other people genuinely helpful in my life that has a net positive plus in my life? If not, why? Like, sit down and fucking think. But don't, like, think and, like, procrastinate think. But think and, like, okay, the advice I'm getting is A. I, you need to get a job. Yes, but I'm earning money for my business and I'm making 10k a month. Do I really need a job? Or would it just take a time away from me for my business so I'll make less money? I'm about to make more money. And this individual doesn't give a fuck about you. They're just, like, telling you because of peer pressure and social pressure and social norms. Like my mother, for example. Or like perhaps your mother, your parents, your, your, the individuals in your life. Maybe those type of individuals, sure, okay? And I'm not saying destroy them verbally. Whoa, chill out there, buddy. But I'm definitely saying, do these individuals have the best interest in, in, of your interest? Do these individuals, Jesus Christ, do these individuals have your best interest in heart? Do they? Are they just saying it because they can say it? My mother in this case is just talking to talk. Genuinely, a person just talking to talk. In an emotional mess. Just talking to talk. You know, you know, I, I, I fucking find this meme. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find this meme right now when I'm adding this uncut video. Just for you. Just, just for you. I mentioned a lot of other memes in my videos. I haven't been able to add them. But this particular meme stood out to me so much. I decided to download it. And I decided I'm going to put it in a video. Because this meme... It resonated with me so heavily. I just thought to myself, deep within my heart, I'm like, bro, this is too fucking real. This is way too real. And this is scarily real, strangely real. Because when I think about it, the millennials, the individuals that are, and the, and the boomer, the baby boomer generation, individuals that are 25 to 30, 35 to 45, they have failed their parents. I had to say my mom had failed her parents, her parents as well, kind of. They haven't become that big success. They haven't really done anything in their lives. They followed the, the mantra that everyone's followed. And now they're just off, off putting, offloading the stress and the trauma from their failures to their children that they, don't, that they probably don't even want. I want to be honest, my mom doesn't even want to, probably want me. Straight up. And so her advice is always going to be an emotional slurry. Like, like an emotional mess. It's never going to be the advice I need. It's going to be the advice she thinks I need. However, I've taken her advice and it doesn't fucking work. Sorry. Boom, I found it. There you go. When you're talking to your parents and it feels like you're talking... Wait, let me, let me just pull up. 
And when you're talking to your parent and it feels like you're talking to an unhealed eight-year-old with horrible communication and comprehension skills. What the fuck? First man says something interesting that I don't think I could find. We've got a generation of young men trying to raise themselves. Do you hear me? We've got a generation of young men trying to raise themselves. I'm one of those young men. I'm one of those millions of other young men worldwide, countrywide, that are trying to raise themselves, that are trying to do the right thing. And I speak to you. I speak to the billions of young women trying to make, do the right thing. Tr not trying to be a th fucking three or four slut whore. The men not trying to be slut and whores. They're trying to build families. I speak to you. Your parents, your, the previous generation have failed you. They have failed you. Point blank. They are lazy. They're entitled. They're stupid. They're arrogant. Their responsibility is just all over the place. This is probably the case for the majority of people. If you have good parents, then fucking great. You're really lucky. If you don't, like, welcome to the majority. Like, what, what was it? 45% of sing, uh, of, of thing. Can I find it as well? <laughs> kind of the, the black pilling truth. But it's, it is the truth. 45%... Of Courtney Kardashian, I don't know what her name is. No, Courtney Ryan. My bad. Uh, Forty-five percent of, of women will be single and childless by 20, 2030. 2030 is only six years away. Because we just started twenty twenty-four. That is the truth. That is fact. Period. Full stop. Full blank. Full blank. I don't know what the fuck you say. I don't know what the fuck you say. This is a result of a continuous lapse of judgment, a continuous like onslaught of failures within the previous generation pushed down to the next. And it's, gonna, it's not going to stop until, until you and your friends and your peers and everyone else around us does something about it. That's the only choice. The only choice we have is to become better. Be bitter or be better. When I talk to my mother, it, it's all bitter. It's all your fault. You're, you're 18 years old. But I was sentient when I, I, started, I started being sentient when I was fucking 15, 16, man. What the fuck? That's when I started being sentient. All the other years, I wasn't even like breathing. I wasn't even living. You know what? You know what I'm saying, guys? At 15, end of 15, I was sentient. End of fi 14, I was already fucking depressed. I was already sad. When the first sentient thoughts I had was, I need to off myself. It's real shit. That's the realest shit I could tell you. And so my mom tells me, oh, I'm just disappointed. When, I'm, when, I, when I say her, I, I don't know a way out. So like, I reach a state of such anger and such frustration and such pain and suffering. All my emotions just went out the door. What I feel for you isn't even anger, it's passion. It isn't even emotion, it's, it's a state. I don't feel angry, I don't feel sad, I don't feel happy. Everything just washed away. Like my brain just like fucking trying to snap that shit out of, my, out of itself. So it doesn't have to fucking cope with the fact that, like, bro, this shit's kind of fucked. Work, 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 work. You know what I'm saying, guys? That's how fucked shit is. The advice of others are not always, always applicable. Because the advice of others, they don't even know what the fuck you're going through. Find someone that knows what you're going through. And you know what they're going if they're going through um, shit. If they've been through shit themselves. And it's very evident. Like, David Goggins been through shit. Guy from Breakup been through shit. Guy's failed a lot. Failed his business, class clown being laughed at, been through shit. Yeah. Find an individual like this. And then succeed. And then make a decision. My next point. Reach your conclusion. Okay, guys? Reach your conclusion is a very, very difficult thing to do. And I, even my, I myself, I'm struggling with this. But I know one thing in my heart of hearts. Make fucking money. And why make money exactly? Because money equates to value, right guys? Money is perceived to have value. When you have a lot of money, you are perceived to, uh, to be an individual that has a lot of value. Okay, ladies and gentlemen? Once you have that, 
that it becomes increasingly easy in order to make better decisions, live a better lifestyle, and do whatever the fuck you want to do without the constraints of the opinions of the lessers. Honestly, the lessers. Hamza has Adonis, Jeffrey. I have the lessers and the greaters. It's something more arrogant, something more boastful, something more powerful. You know, my mom told me in, in the moment of, of like my depression, or in the moment of like my emotions like escaping my body in real time, a moment of me just losing it all, losing it all to the point where I don't even have any anger left in my soul, mother fluffer, mother fluffer. I have no anger left in my soul. This passion, to create these videos, to work, the discipline, but these are external factors that I don't um, uh, encounter. Think I can't I'm probably the most productive I've ever been in my entire life. Dead honest. Kind of weird to say, but it's the truth. <sighs> she told me she was disappointed in me. She doesn't want to say anymore, but she was still shouting in my ear. She was still blaming me. She was telling me, she's telling me, you have to fix this. You have to do this. There was no, there was no resemblance of remorse. What remorse? What is remorse to an individual like this? They don't, they don't understand. They straight up don't understand. Find someone who understands. I'll find someone who understands. Analyze them to the core. What are their philosophy? What are their goals? What are their passions? What are they aiming towards? How do they get out? David Goggins style. Can't hurt me. David Goggins had nothing going for him. He was a pussy. He was a fucking coward. He ran away from his issues. He was like 300 pounds. Like 150 kilograms. And he was like a 70, natural 75 kilogram guy. What did he do? He worked so fucking hard. His fucking nails got ripped off. And he lost, he lost everything. He lost everything. And he became a new man. You want something like that, motherfucker? I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say motherfucker like an American so bad, it's not working. <laughs> Mother fluffer. You want something like that. Because when you have something like that, or someone like that, you are able, through the, through the experience of other individuals, you are able to reach a conclusion. Which is the entire premise of this point in the video. I want you to reach your own conclusion. You know, guys? Weird. I watched some Sulik video. This is kind of nice. Depression, girls, stoicism, everything that is happening right now. Sorry, I'm just typing up the gameplay for this video. Apologize. Now, I'll be dead honest with you. I don't want you to rush this. Even though I'm probably rushing it myself. And I'm not taking my own advice. But the reason why I don't want you to rush this is because I don't want you to arbitrarily make a failure. You can blame me if you want. Blame me at the end of the day, it does not solve anything. Dead honest. You don't know what I'm I'm dead honest with you. Blaming at the end of the, me, at the, end of the day solves nothing. But teeing my advice, because I've fuck, I'm fucking going through it right now. No, I've been through it. I'm going through it right now, I'm making a video. I, like, I'm so emotionally exasperated. There are no emotions left to feel. There is, there is nothing left to feel apart from... Not even despair, apart from passion, apart from discipline. When when there is zero, like, you, you can't help but, like, try to count the ones. When there's, you know, when you're in prison, kind of weird to say this analogy. When you're in prison, you probably will work harder. Like, a lot of individuals, they go to prison, suddenly they start fucking doing push-ups and, and press, uh, press-ups, whatever you want to call it, and burpees and, and work and workouts they've never done before and they never thought of because they're in a situation where they have so little, their only choice, their only way is to go up. It's the only way to get out of it is to struggle so hard. That's the only way you can really cope with your being. If you're in this situation, it's a blessing in disguise, in my opinion. I genuinely believe that one of these situations is a blessing in disguise. Honestly. Because if I didn't feel this shitty, then I wouldn't take my, such massive concerted action towards trying to become better. Dead honest. That's the way I think. Look at the bright side of things. And I'm a very pessimistic type of guy, but motherfucker, if I don't if I don't look at the bright side, everything's gonna go okay, A wall. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Laugh of pain. I urge you to look at the bright side of things, but if you do, it makes things just a bit more tolerable. Honestly, just a bit more tolerable. And just a bit more tolerable, just one more day, that like that motherfucker says. I'm gonna ask you for another week. I'm gonna ask for another year. I'm gonna ask for one more day. And <sighs> that's what I'm asking from you as well. I know what it's like to want to end it all, take the easy way out. I, I really do know what it's like. I, I am going through it as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, 
But you must reach a conclusion, and your conclusion must be strong enough to, in order to mitigate every single problem. If I became rich right fucking now, it would not solve every single problem on the table, surely. I mean, minor pay problems that I'd be able to solve, no doubt. And there'll be, there'll be a whole lot of stress I, I'll probably experience, no doubt. But, but, mother trucker, mother fluffer, would I be in a bad position? I would just say, yeah, I'm a millionaire, I don't care. Like, I, can, I can say it so easily because I've imagined it a thousand times in my head. I'm a millionaire. I don't care. I'm a millionaire. I do not care. I'm too big for this. It's like a. It's like it's like the, it's like a, it's like that tenet in in in, in the Christ, uh, Christ, uh, Christian mythology. You know, pride is a sin. Sure. I'm all, I'm dead, I'm not too sure. You're right. You're probably right. But I believe in my heart of hearts, pride can be used effectively. Intelligently, in order to benefit you in ways you cannot possibly imagine. If you think you are better than uh, than these than these activities, you will not do them. It's like the drugs and alcohol and party life that everyone else goes through, in, like within their teen years, and then everyone feels formal for not going through in their teen years. But then they go through it later, but then they still feel formal because they're doing their teen years, like teen love, like mother trucker, the girl that you're in love with in your teenage years when you're a low value man. Okay, when you're a low value man and you're worth nothing, you have no penny to your name. When you're literally like like a like a bomb barrel, you're ugly, you're fat, you're like twenty percent body weight. The girl that's with you at this time of your life, is she gonna be with you in the next twenty years? Yes, amazing. No probable, most probable outcome. So what the fuck are you doing? What? Where's why is there the formal? You these years fucking grind, put it onto the grindstone, feel the formal. You can feel it anyway in the future. Like think about it, guys. If you're if you're an individual that feels formal, that fears feels fear of missing out. Young. Okay, guys? And I'm giving an advice that I will take myself. And I am probably going to listen back to this video so I can take this advice myself. So I'm acting a bit exasperated, but. Like, be realistic. There's no need to rush. You shouldn't rush probably making a fucking business though on your website that you'll be procrastinating on. You should probably rush, uh, you know, making the millions of dollars and rush that lifestyle. Sure. Rush making mistakes. Rush reading books, rush doing the productive things that will make you happy and rich and successful and fulfilled, sure. But when it comes to the other arbitrary things, don't fucking rush, bro. Take your fucking time. And that's, what, and that's advice I'm giving from the bottom of my fucking heart, dude. Reach your conclusion. Use books. Use any information you can get. Think, ponder, like, like a fucking Greek philosopher. I made a point way, way back and I didn't really expand on it. I apologize for that. I'll try to watch the video back and try to add my two cents in editing. But if, if my audio quality is bad, then don't blame me. Okay, guys. Reach your conclusion and take that step. Like, action is everything. Okay, guys. I thought to myself, becoming a millionaire, like I said before previously, yeah, I'm a millionaire, I don't care. I'll get a nice penthouse. I, I, I don't know if I haven't made this video yet. I made it somewhere, but I haven't uploaded it. It's on my own computer, I believe. I don't think I have uploaded it, unfortunately. But it was like a penthouse in, um, in East London. And it was like fucking gorgeous. It was like 10 million quid. 10 million pounds. 11, no, like 15, 13, 15 million dollars. Some shit like that. And then I just thought to myself, like, fuck, if I just had the money for that, like, it would be amazing. I'll get a penthouse like that. I'll probably move everything I have. All my, all my, like, my computer, my laptop, my monitor, arm, everything. I would try to, like, give away, like, the shit I don't want anymore. Like, you know, some useless dumb shit. But everything else, just, just, just take. I would see my room, my small little room, and I'd be satisfied with seeing it empty. And I would say my final goodbyes to my mom, and I would just move to my place and just, just sit on my mattress, on the floor, in my, my fucking massive bedroom. This is depends. I might, I might get it pre-decorated. There's a feeling, a slight feeling in my heart that I might just buy it with no decorations. Or no uh, furniture. Nah, I'll probably buy furniture, but there should be like a bedroom that like, I'll probably ask them to keep empty. I just put all my shit in there. I just put, put the mattress on the floor and just sit and like, lay down the mattress. And just look out the fucking window outside my million dollar penthouse and just think, oh, I'm free. Like, I would be... Like, that would, that would lift so much weight off my shoulders. I wouldn't have that. Because my mom always tells me, yo, you're living in my roof. You're living in my house. You're going to do what I say. I'm like, fucking fair enough. Like, yeah. I apologize. Sorry. It's like, suck. So, never bite the hand that feeds you. Just suck the tongue. Constantly. That's not, that's not what I'm saying, is it? It's a bit sus. It's a bit sus. I apologize for that. Just, <laughs> just take it on the chin. Be a man. Like, do, do this, do that, do this. Sorry. Sorry, mom. Uh, 
uh, I would, I would just say no. I would just say no. I would just, I would have the freedom and the ability just to move out. You know, I'll probably be out there dating as well. That'd be nice. Try to make more money. Try to go back to Vietnam. Go back to Korea. Try to date around. See a girl with, see a girl with good family. And then after that, it's just get a family. Like, and then, you know, focus on raising my kid the right way. Like, they should be raised. On, like, the fucking abusive household that I was raised in. No doubt there'll be, like, a semblance, like, resemblance of discipline and, like, and power dynamics. No doubt. But, like, this, the mindless child game, like I said before, with the, like, you know, the parent. It, you, it's like, if, it feels like you're talking to, a, you're talking to your parent, but it feels like you're talking to an unhealed eight-year-old. Like, I would tell my mum, like, you said you're going to do this on February. And now you're telling me it's better if you do it fast now. I'm trying to do it fast now. I made a mistake. I apologise. But if I, unless I do something about this mistake, then it's not going to get mitigated. And then she's like... Oh, but what did you do before? But I texted you. Oh, no, no, no. Like, shouting in my ear. I'm like, fuck, dude. Mother fluffer. Like, chill. Take like a chill pill. Like, like, that's the tone that she takes with me. And I'm like, I'm so done. I'm so exasperated. Like I said before, like, I'm pretty much my, my fifth time saying it in the video. I'm so finished. Uh, all I have left to say is... GG. Okay, you're right. Like, I have nothing else to say. I'm so exasperated, mother fluffer. And although that issue is very mitigatable uh, compared to probably what she went through in her youth, like, she probably went through much worse in her mind. And to be fair, it's her first time parenting. And in her mind, she's probably like, she's being, she's being like a good parent here. I don't think she is. And she's not raising me to be a very, very masculine man who's going to achieve everything in life. But, I think in my mind, I've already forgiven her. Because at the end of the day, she probably is like an unhealed eight year old. Probably has trauma back from back in the day. To bite into that trauma and to try to heal her is idiotic of me because it's been like, I don't know, fucking decades and she hasn't healed yet. So, what am I gonna do? She's gonna listen to me so much. Like, there'll always be a dynamic unless I change the power dynamic by showing, like, moving out, showing, king, giving time away, you know. Have my own place, have my own income. Like Asian, they already care, they already care about income, bro. Then I'll see you. We're fucking Asian, man. Like money is every, money is like our culture. It's good and a bad thing, definitely. Um, good side is like you see money as a tool. But I think a lot of things can be equated. And a lot of things of value can be equated to money. It's kind of annoying. But yeah, my conclusion is still um solid. I do want to make a lot of money. I do want to live a lot of lifestyle. Holy shit, this Ferrero Rocher is so fucking nice. The white chocolate Raphael or coconut Ferrero Rocher. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So good. And it's very good. It is gorgeous. Holy shit, sorry. I did reach a conclusion. I apologize for writing on about my personal life. That isn't my intention by no means. No doubt. Um, it is my intention though, it's to try to guide you. It's kind of like a Venn video. I should probably make it into more like informative video. But I, I can't bro. I can't. Okay guys. I'm going through a lot. I just need to get some more work done. Fluff. Mother fluffer. What is this? Charger. Why is it stuck around my table? Pause. 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 Okay. Once you have... Understood that the advice of others are not always applicable and you, you reach a conclusion of uh, what you want to do and what you need to do and what you think is right And you want it, it can't be like a stupid one like I want to play a fucking guitar and go surfing in a caravan and have no bills and never pay back like my parents I think it's a very stupid goal to have but that's based on my um It's based on my dogma, based on my rhetoric. Probably my coach played um, a huge role into that, no doubt But I think it's genuinely fucking stupid to like, you know like, be like, oh yeah, your parents, they, they were supposed to do that. Like, my mom sees it as a burden. My mom probably sees it as a burden, no doubt. My mom probably sees it as a burden that I just spent so much money to, like, keep me happy and keep me entertained when I was younger. And I feel, in my, in my heart of hearts, that it is kind of my uh, obligation to pay her back. Even though she's abusive and even though she sucks, even though she, she always bullies me and everything. And she manipulates me and she gaslights me. Sure. In my heart of hearts, despite all of this, and this is going to come out, it's going to come out very hypocritical. And despite 
me like literally professing my hatred for her and how life sucks because of her at the end of the day your mom is still your mom okay guys that's my genuine advice does this mean i'm not gonna take time away when i get money does this mean i'm gonna demand my respect when i'm or i am gonna demand my respect when i when i believe i genuinely deserve it no i am gonna demand my respect and i'm gonna take time away from her when the time is right and i have my money and i have everything set up of course but listen at the end of the day your parents uh, no matter how much you hate them They are still your parent. They're imperfect. Probably kind of stupid. They probably are like an unhealed eight year old. And my mom's a single mom. So I had no father figure in, the, in my life. And the only father figure I had was my mom's ex boyfriend, who abused me emotionally and slowly into physically. I, I, that's a story from the time for another time. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't messy. It wasn't clean. It was very messy. It wasn't the most pleasurable experiences. I mean, abused all my life bullied relentlessly for my race for my age for my socioeconomic status, status even though I'm fucking like 13 years old for my body composition I was fat as fuck I was obese previously it was just so fat and lazy now it's your 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 you're still lazy and all you do is work out you're still fucking lazy and you're still retarded I get told that on a day regular basis, guys. Even though I probably do have mental illness, I have fucking depression. Um, is it a seasonal? Is it a seasonal curse? No, it probably can be mitigated by a million dollars. Definitely sure, sure. Like a billion dollars would fucking make me very happy, and I will probably never get depression ever again. Perfectly honest with you. So it kind of is situational in that sense. It's just because I have a lot of stress. Mm, I don't really feel depressed right now, probably because I'm so numb and void. But I'm just gonna get back to work. You know, fuck it. We ball. Uh, I would like to like my conclusion, my personal conclusion is make a lot of money, live a free lifestyle, probably try to you know bring my friends along with me, my really close good friends, my best friends along with me. I really really like to bring them along, and then live life happy. Honestly, live life happy, clean, fulfilled. I like to have kids, love kids, a lot of fun time. Haha, <laughs> innuendo. I get it. Sorry, a lot of fluffing, a lot of fluffing. Pause. And yeah, that's why I generally think, from the in my heart of hearts, is right. I would like to develop my my business. I like to develop. Perhaps, I would like to. A big goal of mine is it is boxing, but I, <clears throat> my, my love for boxing is waning. <clears throat> it's hard staying a fan of boxing. Like, like I, I already I feel like I complete this chapter in my life when it comes to boxing. I do want to take an amateur fight. I think it's a good time to take it. It's a good time to go serious in it. But, um, it's not really who I am. Kind of sad to say. And I don't want to go on the back end of quitting it. It's kind of dumb to invest so much and just quit. But, simultaneously, it's dumb to continue when my heart isn't in it. But then there comes discipline, where it's like, fuck it, I, I, work must be done, work, job's not finished. And I think about that often, and I think, yeah, work's not finished, job's not finished. Let's think about that, let's just think about that way. It's more beneficial. Do what you think is right. That's my final point. I don't think there's going to be another point, because I don't think there should be another point. It's a lot. There needs to be a moment in which, like, um... Like M.G. DeMarco talks about in the book, M The Millionaire Fast Lane, a pivotal moment, a change, a career changing moment, like a, like a, a, a fuck, fuck my life moment, FML moment. And it needs to be so powerful and so resonating that it motivates you, even for a split moment, to push the boundaries of what was previously thought impossible. To push the boundaries of what was previously thought improbable, out of bounds. To become a millionaire. Become successful to chase that dream. Cause deep down, that's not that's not what we all want. Like, like safety and security within nine to five. That sounds glamorous to very few. The majority, you, like you ask the majority, would you like a million pound, a million quid, ten million quid, 
20 million quid, 50 million, 100 million, a billion. Would you like to become a billionaire today? Majority will say, yeah, yeah. But where is the concerted action towards this billion dollar task? There is none. Because they haven't had that big, I fucked up failure moment in their life. Where everything is looking so down, they have no choice but to go back up. Like a prison cell moment. And majority of people take the safe route, take the socially accepted route, and they never ever grow. That is the truth. That is the genuine truth from the bottom of my heart. It's probably you. It definitely is me. It's safe. I'm not, I'm not taking the risk. I'm not working hard enough. And, and like, it's either, it's either suffer in your mind or suffer in your body. You have to go gym, work hard. You work hard, so hard on your business, you fucking collapse. Like, I remember reading a note by Alex Becker. Imagine working so hard. The moment you wake up, you work for 20 hours. You then take a break to pee or eat whatever food you own. Imagine doing this. For six months to a year. For two years to five. Imagine doing this. Only sleeping four hours a night. Imagine doing this for that long, that period of time. Imagine this for a decade. You would have very little problem becoming rich. You would have very little problem getting whatever the fuck you want in life. That is the genuine concerted truth. So why don't you do it? This level of obsession is very difficult to trick. And I believe I felt it only once during my GCC days. I thought I was going to die. Honestly, I thought I was going to die. I think it was more than beyond the death. Fear of failure, fear of death. And he had an easy system in front of me. So it was easy to make, make the money. I mean, I make the money. Not make the money. It was easy to get the grade. Get grades. It was easy to get good grades. It was hard to do anything else. It's hard to trigger that level of obsession again. It's very difficult, I'll be it. If I could, I would be unstoppable. Unstoppable. Genuinely. Pace's video kind of died a bit. I apologize. Because I'm feeling tired after 42 minutes straight. <sighs> Do you think is right, ladies and gentlemen? Go through that fuck up, fuck up moment. Go through that moment where you're taking advice from shit people. Go through that moment of reflection when you're trying to give yourself your own advice. The best advice that you can give is probably the advice that you can give yourself. No, 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 I phrased that wrong. The best advice you probably give is to a person that's in the same situation as yourself. Create that avatar. Feel like a schizo for talking to yourself. Fuck it, bro. I'm talking to myself in this video right now. I don't care. Person A, Steve. Steve's in a shit situation where he hates his job. Okay, Steve. Save up six months of in um, thing, of, of income, of money. Six months of, uh, of wages. Six months to, to, uh, to 18 months if possible. Save up, rigorously save, cut corners, go crazy. Then you have six months of free leeway. You can do whatever the fuck you want for six months. Oh. Try that business. Try that YouTube channel. Work so fucking hard you pass out. Remember that you're either you're either comfortable in your uh, in your mind and uh, uncomfortable in your body, or uncomfortable in your mind and comfortable in your body. You can take the easy way out. You can work your nine to five job, come in, come from home, clock out, watch Netflix, zone out. Eat food, get that big gaming setup, and never really get to use it. Yeah, you can do that, sure. Sure. But do you want that? No? Okay, get back to fucking work. You reach your conclusion, do what you think is right. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Live mediocre, die mediocre. Peace.